So, here we are at the Tong House once again for an exit interview. And uh, all this time that you've been here, the last three months, uh, we have been calling you Pei. Yes. And uh, why don't you explain to the viewers uh, your your full name and how how it's spoken? Um, my family name is Song, um, and my first name is Yuan Pei. Yuan Pei. Yuan Pei. Yeah, but just um, I guess Yuan is somehow a bit difficult to pronounce. So I would just tell people just call me Pei. Yeah. But it's Yuan Pei. Yuan Pei. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for the last few days we'll call you Yuan Pei. Okay. Yes. But copy pay is fine. I mean, I'm used to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, here we are, and I wanted you to actually explain to the viewer what you've been working on during your uh, uh, three month period here. So can you do that? Yeah. Um, so when I apply for this residency here, um, um, well, I think I also like write it in our in my application saying that mm -hmm. um, I know like Humber Funeral House was like represent at the time that is um, mainly uh, like muscular white male and there should be a which bit. is inaccurate but I know I know yeah yeah but, but that was your perception that was my perception and I think I think that's also a lot of people who are yes. know the foundation a lot. they think that's their perception as yeah. well I agree. So I do write that in my in my application, and then, and then that kind of began of what I was trying to do. I was trying to, um, you know, do some research on um, Asian American, especially uh, queer Asian, and try to interview them and then talk about their um, upbringing, their life uh, growing up in America. What's um, what's it like, you know, to kind of. Uh, living in this white muscle dominant culture, and what's their struggle or surrendering or their life um, storytelling? So yeah, that has been my research, and uh, that's also what I was trying to come out um, during my residency. Still work in progress. So. And what form has that taken? In what mediums? Um, I do join. I do a lot of poetry drawing, but um, try to give it a more depth. I do do interviews, so therefore a video come along with it, kind of to explain why um, how this drawing um, works. I kind of call this kind of uh, relational portrait. It's like I do a portrait. I'm trying not to just from my perspective, and a lot of them are they explain it to me. What their um, what their vision, what their their looks they look like through interview, and then also like magazine kind of to explain my own personal journey like throughout this entire uh, residency. So, can you give us a couple of highlights on your journey that you've uh, gone through during this time, these last three months? Um, highlights. Yeah, I mean. Um, you've attended some functions here, yeah. and uh, and uh, you've met people, and you've met uh, a variety of different people yeah. uh, during your time here. And has that, how has that affected you? <clears throat> well, I think particularly this this particular residency are quite different. Um, First of all, it's not like a traditional art residency. It's very, uh, it has its legacy with Tom of Finland and it's, it's run by you, run by almost like family uh, structure here. And I, I do, um, I take this opportunity very dearly because it's, uh, I don't feel like I'm always like forced to try to do something, some like work that um, to but other, I mean, what I mean is um, I was able to you know kind of just in the beginning I'm just kind of leave and kind of enjoy have fun meeting new people and also how 
the entire uh, foundation was so it's not only sex positive but also like really supported in in many different way I don't I, I don't know for me at least a lot of my work I feel I didn't mm, how do I put it in my way mm, let me think well, in in regards to your work, um, mm. you you said that you didn't feel like you were pressured, yeah. and so that you could find it. Had you um, was um, was this all predetermined before you came, uh, on, or was it really sort of open ended so that you could really sort of what where were you when you arrived? Were you sort of trying to uh, get a sense of what how it was going to be expressed? What was it? No, actually I didn't, I didn't know like what You didn't? I didn't really know what I did. I, I mean, I know I wanted to portray because I know that's for my medium. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. And I know I'm trying to kind of tell the Asian queer story, uh -huh. but I didn't. I didn't know I would enjoy it this much. Uh -huh. mm. I, in fact, I didn't know I would like LA this much. I thought at first I thought, well, you know, it's a big city, and then, you know, from the movie, from from people explain quite LA as a car city, it might, can be quite difficult, and maybe can be very like a macho culture, but. I mean, what did you as, find as, out? Na as naive as I am, but it's actually quite the opposite. Yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe because where the foundation was also situated in the, um, in the Echo Park. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, it's, it's very easy to go around. But, and also the people I met in, I mean, I can also can be a bit biased because it, a lot of people I met through foundation, through friends, friends, but it's just very, very diverse, more diverse than what I thought. And then that kind of goes to how, you know, when people think about from the Finland Foundation, have this very one um, perspective. It's also what I experience is quite opposite. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I can only say what I experienced. I don't know if this foundation actually went through certain kind of change or challenge, but from what I see, it's a uh, like I have Gray with with trans, I have me and pre before me as old, and this is also just all different kind of people that kind of cross mm. impact. Yes, and sort of like our our own community. Yeah, I I don't know. Do you do you feel like uh, throughout all these 10, it's 20 years, is it changing? Huh? Yeah, it's evolving. I mean, we can go back yeah. uh, a, a decade and a half when we had a trans man mm -hmm. here. Uh, so, uh, um, in a residency. So, it's not like something new to us. Yeah. But I certainly think that uh, as time goes on, we become more varied and more diverse. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, did, I certainly feel that way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how did you enjoy our events? Yeah, that's, I enjoy it very much. Like almost everyone, like every month there is uh, when we have, like my, me, me and Gray have an exhibition tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. But, and also other artists when they, when they show. And then also different, like some do performance, I do drawing and then some do like fabric printing. Um, and video so and this dynamic with all these uh, different artists that we uh, come from different parts of the world kind of meet here and I know some of them I will like keep in touch for sure when I go to visit them yes. in, in different parts of the world so it's it's a uh, kind of like a I you know I don't usually say this mm -hmm. but uh, I realized that um, I want to say this is that uh, the amount that you as an artist and you representing all of the artists that have come here that uh, 
you give an enormous amount of, of to the foundation. So I know you take from us, and that's exactly what is meant to happen. Mm. But uh, it's very, you're very rich in in and and also um, there's something about uh, being open mm. and 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 willing to uh, to explore new things, which actually is very. Um, it makes us feel extremely good inside. And so I don't normally talk about that, but it's usually focused just on you. But it is about you. But speaking of which, I think when you talk about the highlight, um, I think what you just explained, um, that would be, it should be my highlight. It's like, I think through foundation and through this residency, like how, it's kind of hard to put into words, but yeah. it's just, you know, the legacy of what this place is and then how open this place allow me to be. And I do open up more to try new thing. And, and it's not saying like, you know, like it would say, okay, some other residency maybe it was like very serious on like producing certain kind of work and then it was kind of our market driven, but I don't feel it's like here. It's really, I don't know, at least I feel there's a lot of self learning and growing. Um, I might not have to, I'm not be able to pinpoint right now, uh -huh. but I do feel the sense of free. Um, and it's something that was open, that I was afraid to do so before. And here kind of have some example was sitting in front of me and then, like not this kind of environment secretly give me a hint that it's okay to, to do it um, you can try it and it doesn't matter and those kind of warm feeling or like secure feeling per yeah. se, that um, I think that would that would be something that I actually take really? away with me yes and that will um, it will be a beginning beginning um, point for me to grow from here. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I hear you and um, in other words, freedom mm -hmm. is, is a word that, you know, it's surprising we don't realize that we're actually inhibited until we discover new openings mm -hmm. where we can actually um, express ourselves in, in a more fully, you know, without inhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so in regards to um, the mission of your um, of your residency, it did you come? It's really about this showing how the queer Asian exists mm -hmm. here in in Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, but not only that. I think. Um, I also kind of took that as an opportunity and to try to discover myself as well. So, I mean, the reason I called it my show, The Banana Republic, it's really... Again, what is the name of your show? Banana Republic. Okay. So, you know I mean? it was a term that um, back in the day, people right. didn't talk about Latin America or right. South America when they uh, was like basically was dominated by the United States. Okay. The um, was the economy was controlled by the United States. So almost like a, it's not a colonization, but in other sense, it's, it's almost. So and also banana kind of referring to to Asian people to Asian immigrant in particular. And uh, I, I don't want us to forget that you came here to America mm -hmm. as an exchange student when you were how old? I was 14 in high school, yeah. 14, yeah. and you went to Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So even though I'm not American, and I'm also not an immigrant, but somehow this Americanness, American culture has, in a way, and I also came, came here to study in my undergraduate as well, so it has um, kind of penetrated in me in some, some way right. you know, or another. And so like 
so I was interesting to kind of understanding this kind of Western dominant culture that how when we are growing up, um, you know, when Asian is, um, I mean, it come out in our interview with other Asians well, like it was not desired, it was uh, almost non-sexual and almost, and you don't see a lot of um, in movie or in even in porn industry back in, in the early 2000s or 90s. So this kind of, and everyone kind of want to become, be, want to be white. In, in sense of self colonization right so um so i think it's quite relevant to use this name banana republic to talk about this generation and how do we uh and now in 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 mid 30 late 30 a lot of them went through this kind of decolonization process of them then if to the interview almost like deconstruction right? yes yes and which is quite powerful to hear other people uh went through that and then and also made me realizing when i what i was learning through pop culture through media and and how i you know like find my own way to say okay where do i anchor as my my own identity and and also also being queer being gay person is kind of double double layer of minority in that right. sense and um, I don't know, it's an ongoing process and I'm still, uh, I, I would say this work is still, it's uh, like a work in progress. I'm taking some of their story and kind of showing some of my own story and then try to present to the audience and it's not going to, it's not an answer. It was just, uh, right. yeah, it was just a, a process that we all have been through and we want to let people know that what, yeah, the Asian uh, community too to exist and then what we have been through and that you're here yeah and present yeah and that uh, you're making your mark mm -hmm. it's your turn right yeah yeah so um so when you go back will you be going back to uh, Taipei Taipei yeah that's where I live and uh, the future is uncharted. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, I mean, you've had relationships here, and uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I I met amazing people here in LA. I mean, that, that's also why I think um, this trip has brought a lot of surprises to me. I mean, not not only just the work itself. It was it was. Uh, intellectually like challenging and I was trying to try to find the right angle but also yeah I meet like beautiful people here and then yeah I do have some some beautiful memories yes that will you know bring I, with me. I think that um, what uh, has you've done a very good job at communicating your intellectual uh, stance mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. And that, uh, uh, and it uh, it has impressed me and uh, and those around us. So, uh, and so I'm looking forward to tomorrow yes. and uh, and your presentation and uh, and all of the people that will attend. Yeah. And also, I'm looking forward to your future. Yes. I mean this. I keep telling other people that I mean, come after coming here, this feel like another home. So for and sure, you see that you people, not, people do come back to visit. Yeah. So you will not get rid of me. Oh, okay. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you.